Good morning, this is Pastor May J.G. Gilbert Sr. coming to you from Piney Hill Baptist Church. We're coming to you this morning at our Sunday School Hour. We thank God for you coming and joining us again this morning. We thank God for you tuning in on Facebook and also on our uh, 800 conference line. We pray, God, that you are continuously being blessed, and we pray, especially for the Piney Hill family. We pray for the uh, Hendricks Douglas family for the loss of Sister Versina Douglas. We ask that you would just continue to pray for her and pray for that family, that God would con continue to put their loving arms around them to comfort them during their hours of bereavement. But we do have a beautiful lesson this morning, Faith of Abraham, coming out of Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. Uh, that's lesson 7 in our commentary. Uh, out of our lesson this morning, we want to look at, to summarize, uh, Abraham's uh, righteousness, then uh, distinguish between what is imparted righteousness and imputed righteousness. And as we look, imputed righteousness is that righteousness of Jesus credited by to the Christian, enabling the Christian to be justified. But imparted righteousness is that righteousness that uh, comes through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit after we've been justified and saved, but working in our lives to enable us to be empowered uh, through the process of sanctification. So uh, we are continuously growing in grace, growing in the spirit of our Lord. So we need both that imputed uh, righteousness that comes through our accepting Jesus Christ, but then by the power of Christ through the Holy Spirit, uh, he imparts in us the righteousness that we would be sanctified. That means that we are growing spiritually stronger each and every day of our lives. Then we want to make a list of, of that imputed, credited righteousness that will direct uh, our thoughts and actions uh, in a week ahead. So hopefully as we look at this lesson, we will be able to glean those facts and to be able to grow each day according to uh, the grace that has been given to us through Jesus Christ. He says, not because of anything of our own, but because of what Jesus did on Calvary's cross is how we become righteous in the sight of God. Uh, Romans 4 chapter verses 1 through 12. Our lessons read, what shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh has found? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has whereof the glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him righteousness. Uh, now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Uh, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Even as David also described blessedness of the man to whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Verse 8 says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Uh, cometh this blessedness then into the circumcision only upon the uncircumcision also. For we said that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Uh, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which uh, he had yet uh, been or being uncircumcised that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that their righteousness may be imputed upon them also. Verse 12, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he being yet uncircumcised. Again, we want to look at this lesson trying to get a, a full understanding of how through Christ Jesus that we were imputed righteousness by his blood shed on Calvary's cross. Uh, we can be good, we can do good, but that does not make us righteous in the sight of God because he says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we, we, we do our best, but at our best, the Bible says that we're only filthy rags 
but we thank God that through his darling son, Jesus Christ, that we were imputed that righteousness that will give us a right standing before God when we come before him. In our introduction, they talk about the progenitor of the printing press. They talked about uh, a German entrepreneur introduced a process many identify as the beginning of the modern era. Uh, Jonas uh, Gutenberg, he uh, combined his ideas of metallurgy, book production, and agricultural methods, and others to be able to produce the first a European movable type pr printing press. And the crown of jewel of that career was the production in 1455 of, of uh, the Latin transition or translation of the Bible. They call that the Gutenberg Bible. And then fewer than 50 copies are surviving today. But help the finest example is on display the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. The Gutenberg Press allowed mass production of books and therefore increasing the desirability of literacy and knowledge. Our digital age uh, is far removed from the Gutenberg Press, which uh, in Manson, but the president, he is said, earned him the title as the father of printing. Influence is yet still felt in the world today. But the internet has many fathers of or mothers of in this list, but Apostle Paul has one of his own. In our lesson context, during Paul's ministry, his uh, key issue concerned the role of the Jewish law for Christians who were not of Jewish consent or descent. And then Paul, he wrote this letter to the Romans, and uh, first famous uh, Jerusalem Council had already recognized the Gentiles would be welcome in the church without being required uh, to follow the law of Moses. And the law of Moses said that all, every man child had to be circumcised. But then we come to James and, and Peter, and some of them were arguing that they needed to be circumcised to get into the church. But then Paul went, went and argued for the fact that them, he said, don't put that burden on them that God has put on us. So here, as we are in today, we are, we are part of that Gentile Christian audience that God has well received into the body of Christ. So we don't have to uh, hold the law of Moses and those burdens that were over the Jews. What was given unto the Jews was given unto the Jews. But what Paul says that what Christ did on Calvary, it, 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 it fulfilled all of the law that was required. And we need to be circumcised in the blood of Jesus. Instead of being circumcised by uh, the shedding or cutting of our own blood, uh, that's what circumcision does, isn't it? But what we did is we were circumcised by the blood of Jesus uh, that was what? That shed on Calvary's cross. And that right there satisfied all the need for shedding the blood so that the righteousness of man could be revealed. He said that to, to the remission of sin has to have what? Shedding of blood. So that act of circumcision that Moses, uh, God uh, uh, gave Moses up to the children of Israel was a sign, wasn't it? It was a sign that it would be uh, the shedding of blood will come forth to bring righteousness upon mankind. But we have that righteousness that has been shed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So circumcision uh, is perhaps the most honored of all of the Jewish traditions, but this uh, writ of the nation of Israel, uh, Jewish men were uh, had to get the circumcision, but as we come into uh, this Gentiles, they were being in, welcomed into the church. Uh, Paul is going to say circumcised or not. It's about what's on your heart, ain't it? Uh, you don't have to go through that. So as we get to our lesson this morning, uh, here it is, Paul is addressing that issue to the Roman church. These were Gentiles, Christians, and many of the Jews that were there was holding that they needed to follow the ritual of circumcision. So Paul is setting the matter straight. He says that what shall he say then that Abraham, our father, is returning to the flesh, has found. He said Abraham lived what, over 2,000 years before Paul wrote this book, and Abraham's history is uh, preserved by the people of God of all tradition several hundred years before it was written down uh, in the book of Genesis. And this man uh, had an incredible relationship with God. He trusted God even uh, uh, when he was called to journey to a place that he had never been, had never been seen before. But then he trusted God to provide a legitimate heir. And sometimes our commentary says this, but later on we're going to find that Abraham did have some doubt. He had some doubt. He, 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 he didn't trust God fully. 
Because sometimes he, he, he listened to his wife, and sometimes he listened not to God. His, his wife said, here's my handmaid. They got impatient. She got impatient, waiting on God to give them a son. So they came up with this scheme that if Hagar would be able to have them a child, then that would be fulfilled. Then he thought about, what about his manservant? He was going to uh, don't, uh, give his manservant everything that was going to be there. God said, no, you're going to have a, a son coming out of your own loins. And that son will uh, be able to have you a, uh, a generation that was greater than the stars of the sky or even the sands of the sea. That was the promise that God gave unto Abraham. But we know that Abraham, sometimes he, he, he fell short of, of really trusting God all the way. And then it says in verse 2, if Abraham was justified by works, how therefore uh, to glory, but not before God. So Paul is setting up this verse to establish the source of Abraham's justification. To be justified is to be counted or considered righteous. And But Abraham uh, earned justification uh, through his acts of obedience, his works. You know, that's the question. Did he do that? Uh, no, because... Uh, no amount of work that we can do can be able to justify us when we stand before God. I told you earlier, we can do good, but men, women, boys, and girls, we all sin, and we all come short. So here he is saying that uh, if Abraham was justified by works, you know, he would have had the glory. But you got to give God the glory. Everything that you and I do, you know, your being here today is because of God. You know, it ain't because of you. I know you thought you got up this morning, put your clothes on, got in the car and drove yourself over here. But it was the providence. We talked about it in our Bible study on, on, on Friday night. It was the providence of God that gave you the, the, the wherewithal to be able to come out on Sunday morning and come to Sunday school and to be able to hear the word of God. You can't take that claim on your own. Because if it had not been for the God, the Lord, what, unctioning and waking you up this morning, you could have wished to get off the church all you want. I, I want to go to church, but you might want to go to church, but you don't have that within your power to, to carry it out. I, I want to do this. You know, Paul said that if you're going to do anything, if the Lord's will. You know, we, we talked about the sovereign will of God on Friday evening in our Bible Institute, the sovereign will of God. His will is over our lives. Everything that we do, everything that we carry out is the sovereign will of God. Even some of our problems, some of our things that we don't like, it's the sovereign will of God working things out. Sometimes uh, uh, bad luck, what we call it, you know, Bad luck is what we call it, but it ain't bad luck. It's God working out sometimes, he said, evil upon our lives so it can drive us to our knees. Have you ever thought that if everything happened good in your life, sometimes you just take it for granted and say, everything all right. You know, I, I, I don't pull myself up by my own bootstraps. Sometimes it won't. Hey, look, God got to knock you down to humble you, to be able to get you to give him glory. So here it is, sometimes everything that happens in our lives is what? It's, it's God is in control. God is in control of everything, good, bad, and different. He's in control of everything. But he said that if we consider it good, bad, or indifferent, it all works out for our good. That's how good God is, ain't it? Huh? Everything works out for our good. Uh, talking to Sister uh, Dolores uh, Hendricks this past weekend, I said, 90 plus years, that's a blessing, ain't it? Amen. Now, I know you feel like the loss of your mother and going through the difficulties of, of accepting that, but 90 plus years of having her with you, she said she lost her, her, her father when she was nine years old. But if you lost your father when you was nine years old, God gave your mother extra time that's to right. be able to make that up. But now she's with you. But now she's suffering. Uh, do you love her so much? Do you love your, your mother, your father, your, your, your children, whoever it is? Do you love them so much till you're not willing to turn them loose because of the sickness and the hurt and the pain? Sometimes it's unbearable. Sometimes we just have to let go and let God, ain't it? And, and God understands. He knows all of that. He's in control of all of that. But he says that if Abraham was justified by his works, but he would get the glory. But God... God created man for what? His glory. 
He didn't create us to give ourselves glory. He created to give him glory. So if we call, said that we pulled our own self up, we get the glory. But now we're, we're, we're dealing with a jealous God. He, he's a God that don't like to get uh, 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 overlooked for his glory that he's given to our lives. Verse 3 says that, for what says the scripture, Abraham believed in God and it was counted unto him righteousness. So it wasn't the moving of, of Abraham in obedience, uh, listening to God, being obedient to God, uh, uh, taking up and moving to a place that he had never been in. That's fine. But the thing is that wh what he believed God and he trusted God by telling him to move. And, and then by that, he said that he was counted righteousness before God. So here we are looking at where Paul uh, I mean, is trying to describe unto the Gentile Christians that, that this righteousness that Abraham, the father of faith, he was uh, obedient unto God by believing in God. See, you can do some things and, 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 and really still not believe. You can do stuff and still really not believe. See, it's hard to understand that. Sometimes you just do stuff because you, you, you do stuff. <laughs> But sometimes you're supposed to do stuff because what? You believe that God is going to continue to bless you and take you through this. You know? All right. Uh, uh, receiving righteousness. Get into verse 4. Verse 4 says, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. See, if, if you've done something and you completed it because of the fact that you was trying to repay a debt, the glory goes to the one that you owe. But the thing is, we owe God everything, ain't it? You know, and, and, and the one that paid the debt for us is who? Jesus Christ. He paid the debt on the cross. He said workers are not paid because of grace. You know, it's because they are earned their wages. He said the debt occurred by the employee is therefore discharged. To be justified by God can never be a result of works. Because you can never repay God for what Jesus Christ did on Calvary. For he rescued you from the pit of sin, rescued you from the power and penalty of sin. What, what type of, of, of payment can you pay for that? Now, what can you pay God for what he brought you out of? See, that, no amount of money can repay that, can it? You cannot repay that. So he said that if we really earn what we deserve, remember I told y'all that God is just, but we don't want God to be fair. Look at the definition of fair. Fair means you get what you deserve. If, if, treat me fair. So tr treat me fair. You talk to a brother, you do a job for somebody, you said you need to be fair with me. You give me what I deserve. But we didn't tell God you need to be fair with me. And I said, wait a minute. If, you, if God was fair with you, you would get what you deserve. Yeah. See, grace overshadows that, ain't it? Yeah. Grace overshadows that. Yeah. He said that because if we really earn what we deserve based on our works, we'll remain dead in our sin. Yeah. Huh? God would have never rescued us. He said since the wages of sin is death, the person who thinks a, a, a winning strategy before the throne of final judgment will present a list of his righteous deeds. We're sorely disappointed because you will never be able to have a list big enough to cover everything. Huh? So no one can be declared what righteousness through the works of the law because you can't be good enough because your mind, your, your spirit entertains some things that are not righteous before God. Uh, hey, look, you can be riding down the road to the church and, and, and have some stinking thinking. Huh? Huh? You can be sitting in the church and, and something just come across your mind that you didn't even plan it. Huh? That, that stuff just come in your head. So that means that, hey, you cannot be righteous before God because this flesh causes all kinds of stuff to come into our mind and into our heart. So we, we, we can't uh, uh, declare ourselves righteous by the works that we do. Verse 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted 
for righteousness. Lord, I haven't done it all. Lord, I, I, I've messed up. Lord, I, I know there is no good in me at all. I know whatever I do, it, I, I know I am uh, uh, not, not finished. I'm, a, I'm an unfinished work. But I believe, Lord, that, that, that the one that you sent, the one that you sent to die for me on the cross, he is the one that justified. I believe that, that I will be made whole. You know what the woman said. I believe that I will be made whole. If I believe in the one that he sent that justified the ungodly. Now, who's in that list? Everybody raise their hand. All of us in that list of the ungodly, ain't it? We're in the list of the ungodly. He said that by my faith, by your faith, huh, is counted righteousness to God. I believe that Jesus did it all, ain't it? Huh? And all to him I owe, don't it? He did it for me, but also he did it for you. So this phrase, him that worketh, is, is, it refers to that person who does not uh, depend on personal works to be in the right standing before God. It says no sinner, whether you Gentile or Jew, can earn that righteousness that God demands out of us. See, God doesn't want us to be righteous. God demands us to be righteous. Okay. If we're going to stand before God, he demands us to be righteous. But the thing is, we can't get righteous on our own. Right. Right. We have to put on righteousness. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can be put on righteousness is he, he, he used the word that it was imputed yeah. upon us by what? By the blood of Jesus, what he yeah. shed on Christ's cross. Once I believe in him, I got it, ain't it? Huh? I, I, I got it once I believe in him. And then he said that unearned blessings, verse 6. Even David has described the blessedness of man on whom God imputed righteousness without work. See, unearned. That, that grace is what? Unmerited favor. Yes. So that means that you got that grace on you. Yeah, you got it. But you didn't earn it. it, it you, anything in your life that you have done doesn't merit God's favor. But grace, he gave it to me anyway, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Huh? He gave it to me. And so this line of reasoning moves to the revered figure Abraham to another David historical shift. Thousand years, perhaps more, Abraham's sins, David's sins are remembered even to this day. He committed adultery, he committed murder, and the fallout of his sin dogged David for his whole personal life. See, well, all of us I, I, I think about it and shiver. I, I, I was doing it the other day here. I was sitting at work thinking about some of the foolishness. And, and old folks said, should have been dead and gone, ain't it? Oh, the grace of God, ain't it? But I shiver thinking about some of the risks I took. You know, and, 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 and back in, back in Brother Lee's day, I'm talking about him, back, back in Brother Lee's day, you know, the day these young boys, they ride the car, they drive so slow that the car, the wheels don't want to get dirty. See, they don't want to get no dirt, no dust on their car, so they just cruise. <laughs> Speak with booming, but they're cruising. But back in me and Lee's day, if it was on the speedometer, you, you, they didn't, I, I figured though God didn't put them numbers on their speedometer for no reason. Ain't it right, brother bro, 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 bro Douglas? Yeah, he put them, if he put them numbers on their speedometer, he must have put them on there for a reason. So I see what the end going to be. I, I, so I'm going to run that thing and I want to see it bounce. I, I want to see it go over there and fall this kid and then had to bounce back. But foolishness. I shiver thinking about no, we didn't drive 100 miles an hour on 29. Right. We driving 100 miles an hour on the back road. <laughs> and I'm thinking, Lord, help me, Jesus. I shiver thinking about, right. man, what if a car? Oh, I was getting out of fourth gear one time. I was already, it was five speed. I'm already running 100. Oh. Running 100 and ain't got out of fourth gear yet. And a car start bagging out of driveway. Man, and I'm start shifting down. Boom, boom. I'm shifting down. And I sat there today thinking about that. I shiver 
thinking about the foolishness. But it had not been for the grace of God. Huh? Huh? If it had not been for the grace of God, uh, unmerited favor that he shunned upon my life. He knew that this old boy had to be preaching one day. Huh? He, he knew that you were going to be a deacon, a trustee one day, clerk in the church, huh? Uh, mother of the church, huh? first lady in the church. God knew that. So his grace, unmerited favor, look, Reverend Price and I said that on Saturday night when we went out, it was mother's prayers. Yes. Had a cloud of grace yes. over us, protecting us from our foolishness. So I, I, I sometimes shiver and wonder that, that if God had not imputed his righteousness in my life, his grace shined upon me, I would not be here today. Uh, I, I thank God for his grace, ain't it? Uh, verse 7 and 8 said that, saying, blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven. That's what David has said. And whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord will not impute sin. Huh? He said that blessed is us that our sins are forgiven. We, we are blessed. We are in the grace of God when our sins are forgiven. And our sins not only are forgiven, but they are covered. Remember I said you are you're, you're given the power and over the power of sin, but that penalty of sin. Yeah. He covered you. When you cover your sin, the Lord will not see them. See, when we stand before God, he imputed righteousness. It covered the sin so that that sin that we've committed won't be seen by God when we stand before him in judgment. Yeah. All right? David wrote this, his experience of, of being forgiven by God. To quote these verses before us of David's uh, uh, marvelous uh, uh, works that he has done. And, and this great passage of confession of sin, repentance of sin, then receiving forgiveness. See, did, did you, if you don't confess your sin, I, I heard somebody, uh, number 45, yeah, let, let, let's go right there. Number 45 said that I don't ask God for forgiveness. I just do better. See, that right there, he got to stand before God and give an account of everything. See, when the only thing you need to do is repent and ask God forgiveness, then he covers your sin. But if you just said that I'm going to do better, that sin ain't going nowhere. That sin is still right there in you, on you. So you, you got to have something to, to forgive you of your sin. So he said that, that, that blessed is the man that God didn't impute. He, didn't, he imputed righteousness in you, but he didn't imp impute sin in you. Mm -hmm. So that sin would be there forever. Amen. Father of the faithful, verse 9. Uh, commendeth, or come, excuse me, cometh this blessedness to them uh, upon the circumcision only and upon the uncircumcision also. He said, is this blessing just upon those who are circumcised? Those who obeyed the law of Moses, mm -hmm. he said, but what about the uncircumcision? Mm -hmm. huh? For I say that faith was reckoned unto Abraham for righteousness. It wasn't the, the act that he carried out. It was the faith that he believed that God would do it. Yes. See, yes. That, that, that's what's imputed upon him as righteousness. Him believing that what God would do for him. Verse 10, how was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. He said that the, the promise that God gave to Abraham, the blessing that God bestowed upon Abraham was before he even had the law. Abraham was before Moses. Yeah. Let's look at the picture of it. God blessed Abraham when, 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 before the law of Moses said it had to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So here it is. He, he, he blessed him before he even gave him the command to circumcise. Uh -huh. So he said that, that how is it then reckoned? Was he in circumcision or uncircumcision when God blessed him? Uh -huh. you know, it it kind of makes you think. I, I was having a discussion with a young fellow I told y'all I was fishing with, and he asked me about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And uh, so I asked him a question. I said, when Paul or Peter said that you, you, uh, to be baptized in Jesus' name, you'd be baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
I said, did you see anybody else go re get rebaptized? Did you see the 12? What about the 12 disciples that, you know, Peter was one of the 12. So Peter hadn't been baptized in Jesus' name. Did he go back and get baptized? He said, you got to point that. You know, you got to point that. So here it is. He said that, was it in circumcision or in uncircumcision? He said, no, he, that righteousness that was imputed upon him was before the law was even put on pad. Huh? He put it on pad. See, the fact was important in affirming that circumcision was not necessary, but the faith of the Gentiles uh, to be valid following Christ. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. Listen, it's of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter. The letter of the law, see, that's why, remember, he said that I'm going to take these rules, these Ten Commandments that are on, the, the, on stone. I'm going to put them on the tablets of your heart. Amen. See, while they're on stone, they don't do anything. Come on, come huh? on. They always talk about the Ten Commandments. I see them on side the road. They put them on side the road. You need to follow the Ten Commandments, you know. And, and, but wait a minute. Jesus said, what about the, the two? <laughs> he said, to love the Lord with all thine heart and all thy soul and all thy might and love thy neighbor as thyself. If you do these two. Huh? Hey, hey, you, you're talking about the ten and you can't even work on the two. Huh? Huh? Follow the two. You, you'll take care of the, uh, the other eight. If you take care of the two, you got the other eight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Outward obedience to God's rules. Remember I told you, you might want to do right and you could do right. But doing right without giving God glory don't mean anything. He said outward appearance, uh, obedience to God's rules and regulations does not make a person righteous. Only one's faith mm -hmm. in God's grace can result of being reckoned as righteousness when you stand before God. Following his command is a sign of our faith. Mm -hmm. But without that faith, the signs are meaningless. Amen. It doesn't mean a thing. Mm -hmm. Come into church. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Right. And then wrong with coming to church. Did you come to church by faith? Mm. Do you believe that coming to church is something that God has a desire for you in your heart? Huh? Do you have a yearning to come to faith? Or did you just put your name on the road? Huh? You, you remember I told y'all when we was in Sunday school, we used to have the little gold stars? Yeah. <laughs> we thought that once we had the gold stars, that everything was all right with God. <laughs> God come before us and we said, look, I got my gold star. I was here that day. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Depart from me. I never knew you. Ain't, ain't that, that's rough, ain't it? Huh? I had some preachers say that he preached and, 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 and led thousands to Christ. On his deathbed, he confessed that he didn't know God. So you can lead people to Christ and still not have your heart right. Huh? Huh? That's, that's rough, ain't it? But it's real. It's rough and it's real. And the point is, I'm saying... All the church work you do, Come on, preacher. huh? All the good deeds you do, Come on. if your heart ain't right, ain't it? Come on. huh? Cause you could be doing it for your own glory. That's up. See, that's what this lesson is all about. You're imputing your righteousness upon yourself, or was it imputed by God upon you? Amen. Huh? Amen. Right. He says that, and he received the sign of what? Circumcision, the seal of righteousness by faith that was held. Had yet what being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all of them that believe. And though he, uh, they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed upon them also. He said this example that Abraham was an example unto us. Abraham was imputed righteousness without the law. So he said that now this was an example to us so that we can understand as Gentiles, those outside of the Jewish faith, that without being circumcised, we too can be what? Be righteous in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By faith. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. And the father 
of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who walk in the steps of the faith that of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. Mm. Hey, he became that example unto us that we too, that, hey, look, I am adopted into the family of God, uh, not by circumcision, but by faith. Mm -hmm. uh, if, uh, they, they, I think they tell in our lesson the difference between a devote Jew and a proselyte Jew. A, a devote Jew said, hey, I'm going to join the faith, but I ain't going to get cut. <laughs> but a proselyte Jew is one that said, I, I want to be in the faith, but I'll follow every letter of that law. Mm -hmm. So now I became a proselyte Jew. I'm a Gentile, but I became a Jew, and I will follow all of the rules. Mm -hmm. But that devote Jew said that, hey, I'll, I, I, I'll follow everything, and I'll commit myself to God. But I don't believe that circumcision is necessary. Mm -hmm. So we, we are devote Christians, aren't we? Yeah. We are devote members right. of the body of Christ. We don't have to go through the law in order for us to get to Christ. I go through faith. Mm -hmm. You know, go through faith. So here we're seeing in our lesson that what Paul is trying to let us know that all of us now. Okay, no, that, this came to my spirit just now. If every man had to be circumcised, ladies, what you gonna do? <laughs> I'm just thinking. Be circumcised too. I'm just saying, ain't it? <laughs> huh? Hey, neither male, no female, no Jew, no Greek, no bond, no free, no circumcised, no uncircumcised. See, that women had no way of getting right. Y'all think about it. I had to get right back by my husband. I had to get right by my father. See, women had to get right by their husband or their father. But thanks be to God when Christ came, huh? Hey, hey, he put to death that Old Testament, that Old Covenant. Now, now look, ladies, you can get right before God, huh? By what? By faith, ain't it? Huh? I don't have to de depend on my husband's faith. Mm -hmm. huh? I don't have to depend on my father's faith. Mm -hmm. That now you can be come before God and stand beside your husband, stand beside your father, and stand before God on your own. Mm -hmm. You see what God did? Huh? There was no way, no out look for women to become righteous. Mm -hmm. You know? Y'all you know? think about it. But now. Huh? Mm -hmm. Huh? But now. God has what? What Christ did on that cross by faith. We believe what he did. We can be all now what? Come before God as righteous. Huh? I'm trying to figure now. It's when when that when that the death of that female came before God, how did she get righteous? By her husband? Suppose he won't. And, and she was. Huh? Y'all it makes you think, don't it? Huh? But what God fixed it, didn't it? Huh? We all gotta stand before. All got to stand before God on the merit of what? The righteousness of Jesus that he shed on Calvary's cross for our sin. I just want y'all to think, those on Facebook, want this, y'all run that through your head. <laughs> run that through your head for a while. As we come to our conclusion of our lesson, how far do you allow your faith to take you? Do your actions show that your trust in God can overcome the doubt and allow you to be obedient to him? Our faith leads us uh, to entrust our children to God, no matter the circumstances, what they're going through. Sometimes you just have to turn your children loose. 
Because you, you can't do it on your own. On those Saturday nights, what do you think my mama was praying? Lord, you take care of my children. Huh? You take care of my children. And sometimes you just got to look. She couldn't follow me on Saturday night. Huh? I wouldn't want mama to go where we went. Isn't that right, bro? Huh? Come on, Lee. I know your mama sitting beside you. You don't want your mama to go where you went. <laughs> but I thank God that he what? God me. Wait a minute. At the at the club on Friday night, God was there? Wait a minute. God, you don't think God was hanging around the club? He said, if I send it up into the highs of heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. I can't escape from the presence of God that he had. If he hadn't have been there, huh? We would have got home. Huh? But his hand was what? Upon me. Wherever we are, that God's hand was upon us. He, he guides us uh, to worship. And not money, but to act according to the soul allegiance that we have for him. Faith requires us to live every day in trust of God and his plan that he has for our lives. So again, how far do you allow your faith to take you? Huh? You, 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 you can't take your faith as far as the money hold out. You, 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 you can't take your faith as far as your name hold out. You know? I'm going to go down to the bank and I'm, I'm going to get that loan on my name. Some, sometimes we say that, ain't Huh? My, my, my reputation, my credit score. Y'all y'all young folk, y'all listen. Your credit score ain't good enough. Huh? God had to work it out. See, we, I, I, my faith, I want to get my credit score as high as I can, but it was God's grace. It was my faith in God that he would carry that through. Huh? We got to trust God and then give him the glory for it. It, it won't my credit score. Because look, you, I, I was reading, I, I posted this article on Facebook, uh, Khadijah, they were talking about the young lady who won the spelling bee. Mm -hmm. and, but in 1939, another black girl, she was number one in the last finals of the spelling bee. They had 100,000 words that each one had to read and study. See, I didn't know that. They give them 100,000 words that they need to study. So, But you cannot give them a word that's not on the list. That black girl in 1939 spelled everything that the list could throw at her. So they came up and took a word that won't own the list and, and asked her to spell that. And she misspelled it. Then they asked the other girl to spell a word that was on the list. Well, she won. And they said, you cannot. That was an unauthorized word. And plus, it was a noun. They said it could be a pronoun. So, <laughs> see, they, 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 they do things that that's not according to the word. Mm -hmm. See, but the thing about it is, hey, what they did then, they can't do to me now. Amen. What they enslaved me with then, they cannot slave me now. Mm -hmm. Hey, you might hold me down, but I'm free. Right. Huh? I've been freed by what Christ did on Calvary. Right. Christ freed us from the power and the penalty of sin. But you can stand righteous before God. You can stand before him. But you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. He is the way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But there is not but one way to get to the Father. Mm -hmm. To stand before him in righteousness. And that is by believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Jesus Christ. So our prayer today, Father, may we live daily as people whose faith results in unconditional trust for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. So our thought today is the Lord demands as the Father our faithfulness. He demands us to be faithful. To follow and believe in him, not in ourselves, but to believe in him. God bless you. We thank you for joining us this morning at our Sunday school hour. We ask you to come back at the 10 o'clock hour uh, for our worship service. We got a wonderful word this morning, um, and we're going to encourage you, and we're going to try to hope that uh, in your striving to do good, in your striving to better yourself, uh, to be able to go beyond. Uh, there was old pastor... Uh, uh, Paul Morton said that average average ain't good enough, is it? We, 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 we get to a place and we think that everything is going to be alright and we stop. I told the class last week my pastor E.G. Williams told us to be gratified at how far you've gotten. Never get satisfied but then you stop reaching. Continue to reach for the glory of that God has in store for you. But once you get to that place of stopping, uh, we gonna, I think our lesson this morning is talking about almost ain't good enough. Almost. almost ain't good enough. How many of have we stopped at almost? I, I, I almost. I, I think old King Agrippa told Jesus that you almost, told Paul, excuse me, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. Mm. And now he was right there. Uh, have you ever been right there and didn't take it the extra mile? So y'all come back at our 10 o'clock hour for that worship service this morning. God bless you. May heaven ever smile upon you. We'll see you again and hope that you be blessed this week and continue to trust and believe in God. See you again. God bless you.